Josh, what a great job you did. I have to tell you, you were my favorite character in this film. I just loved mm -hmm. watching you. Thank How you. much fun did you have making this movie? A lot of fun. I mean, a, a lot of fun. It's great working with Paul. It's great working with Joaquin. It's great working with amazing kind of hyper uber creative people like that you don't know how it's going to turn out you know you start doing it and you have talks about it and like should we do this should we go this direction should we do that but then when you finally get to watch the movie and you you know you're humbled and gratified well, when you're working with somebody like paul thomas anderson yeah. I, from what i understand he's very collaborative he lets you guys kind of it's a it's a little loose from what i understand yeah, it's not loose necessarily because you understand you've had so many talks before which a lot, it doesn't happen a lot of times with filmmakers you know but you'll talk because it was an adaptation and we sat down we had the book right there we had the script we talked about each one and uh, so you start to find that, you know, you're kind of wading through all the possibilities. And he's, he's open to the fact that he finds it a collaborative effort and a familial effort as opposed to, listen, I have this thing that I want. It ultimately comes down to that. He has a vision, and it's us being able to provide that for him. But when we're doing it, it becomes much more kind of archaic mm -hmm. than that. I mean, we ended up having, you know, it was caveman days on the set, for sure. <laughs> um, your look in this film. Now, now caveman. first of all, I was just want to know, did it, yeah, is, it, yeah. <laughs> it, is it hard for you to grow the, you know, mutton chops? Because, you know, of course you're so clean cut in this. No, 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 but it's, uh, no, but you don't do that for him. He's going, he's against that whole thing. But that's what I love about him, because he's not only against it, if, it's, it's like when I used to do theater and people were like, Hollywood this and Hollywood that, and I'd be in New York doing theater and they'd be like, and then you'd see him like a chicken commercial the next week and you're like, what happened to the whole Hollywood thing and you're never gonna go to Hollywood? It's the same thing with Bigfoot because you know, you, he's like hippie this, hippie that, and then you see him selling cars with a hippie wig on, you know, and hippie clothes. And you know, he's a constant contradiction of himself, which I love, that was fun to play. Yeah, he, yeah, it looked like it was a lot of fun. Okay, are, are you a little tired of chocolate bananas? Now? No, now it's been about, what, a year? So I'm okay again. I'm okay. <laughs> so you're back on them now? <laughs> no, I'm not back on them, but I'm okay with the thought of them. Whereas before, the thought of them would create a gag reflex that I didn't really like carrying around for as long as I did. Okay, I mean, we said too. we clocked one, one scene that's not even in the movie. The one scene we clocked, I think, 44 bananas in that one day. That's definitely a record. It, it has to be. <laughs> It has to be like a you know a Guinness thing. <laughs> At least so. it should be. I think so, definitely. I have to ask you, when you have a book like this, it's so dense and it's there's just so much going on. Although I know the script was you know amazing because it's Paul Thomas Anderson, but is that helpful to you as an actor to you know to bring out your character more when you have that type of source material? Yes, for sure, because you have a Bible, you know, and I think Joaquin was the same way. He carried around that book, you know, like it was, like it was his Koran, you know, and it was, uh, it, it, it definitely, to have that source material is wonderful to go back to. And when you have somebody also, I'm lucky that I've done a lot of different plays and all that with, with, with dialogue that isn't necessarily mainstream dialogue. So it's kind of, I'm doing it now with the Coens and Hail Caesar. It's, it's a different cadence. It's a different music. But I was very lucky, and not that this is even interesting, but I was very lucky, you know, to be around Anthony Zerbe and Roscoe Lee Brown a lot. So I got to hear kind of poetry, not in the way that you hear it in modern day, you know, kind of, you know. It, you got to hear re the depth and the music of the poetry of like Ferlinghetti or Auden or, you know, and people like Pynchon or Cummings or something like that. So I was really fortunate that I got to hear the validity of that dense stuff. Whereas sometimes it, it could sound really bad coming out of your mouth, yeah, yeah. you know, Pynchon or anybody else. Even Cormac McCarthy is an incredibly dense writer. So to make it, to make it behaviorally accessible is a lot of fun to do once you get it. Yeah. Well, you, know? you, you gave us a lot of fun watching this movie. You were fantastic. Thank in it, you. And I always love talking to you.